I'm really, uh, I'm, I'm happy to be here. I, I love giving people the tools that I've learned over the past 20 years of journalism. Um, and here's the dirty little secret. You know, you don't need the sheepskin on the wall or the big degree to be a journalist. Uh, my seven years of college uh, were horribly wasted. Uh, I, I got much more out of interning at papers and working at my college paper. Um, I wish journalism was more of an apprenticeship because the stuff, that, some of the stuff I'm going to show you today, is. Uh, just stuff I've learned sitting at, at the feet of, of folks that are that have been around a lot, a lot more than me. So I am thrilled to death to be here. And as we put on, um, head to a Texas Watchdog slash Mass slash. Um, I'm going to show you a bunch of links. We're not going to nearly have the kind of time uh, to go through them all. Slash what? Mass M A S S and then slash again. Um, oh, I've lost the internet here. One moment. And I'm going to have this distributed. I'll uh, uh, give it to the folks here who can get it to, to you if you have an email address. You, you can have access to all these, all these links that I'm going to show you. But the most important thing is on top of that link list is my email address and my phone number. I have a team of people at Texas Watchdog. Let me show you the kinds of stories we do before you go. I, I really do love uncovering. Uh, let me back up for a second. We are probably very different, you and I. Um, I have a team that probably votes very different than you. Um, but we all love digging up uh, government corruption. Here's where I differ from you. You're probably here because you want to get rid of government corruption. You want to boot these guys out of office. I love government officials who are corrupt. I, I can't get enough of them. It's a job for life for me. I, it really excites me. I, I really, I, I'm interested in them, and I love government waste. We did so much on the stimulus. I wish it could go on forever. I, I really do. Well, trust me. Oh, uh, thank goodness. Um, but I do want to give you these tools. I'll tell you uh, once. And oh, you're there for it. I, I can do another tab if you want to go back. Yeah, do there. another tab. And just um, here, I'll give you one example. I just love this stuff. If you can just go back to TexasWatchdog.org, you just scroll down a bit. We broke this this week. Um, uh, and this is stuff that you can do, and no one's doing this. And here's also where we differ uh, as well, perhaps, and I, Eric and I may differ a bit on this too. I, I have a lot of sympathy for newspapers. I'm a newspaper guy. I worked at the Denver Post, I've worked at the National Tennessee, and I've worked in Alabama, I've worked in New Jersey, and all for newspapers. I never thought in a million years I'd be working, I would have founded an online only organization. And I had to learn all these skills too. Twitter, I didn't get it at first. None of the social stuff I got at first. It has turned out to be great tools, wonderful tools. Please take advantage of, of the skills that Eric has to offer you. Uh, but it should confuse the hell out of me. Frankly, if I had my way, or if it were only me, if I didn't have a good team, you know, I'd be on the corner here with a mimeograph paper, you know, putting it up. Um, I also have a lot of sympathy for my colleagues, my former colleagues in the newspaper world. Because you're not being well served because of these cuts. I just don't quite get a business model that says, hey, we can do better by getting rid of half the staff that brings you the news. I, I, don't, I don't get it. Um, and one of the reasons I'm here to arm you with these tools is because you need them. Because journalists aren't doing this anymore. And I don't think it's deliberate. I think they don't have the time. They just don't have the time. I remember the day when that Sunday paper landed on your doorstep and it was like a and now it's a, just so much smaller. Uh, you, I'm sorry, you're, you're a bit young. A telephone book is a um, <laughs> uh, I can't use yellow pen. It's a fast You might be able to find one in a museum. So. Uh, this is the kind of stuff I love doing. And it's stuff that you can too. Uh, go down to, uh, hit, click on this uh, tough to swallow. Uh, I, I love the Houston School District. It's uh, they, they, they're always poor. It's sad. They always have their hand out, but somehow they find money for everything. Um, boy, this internet is not to other. Uh, we, we discovered that uh, $2.6 million in wasted food uh, left over. Um, and here's why I love being an editor. 
I get to make decisions like, okay, $2.6 million of waste. Love it, that's a great story. Uh, I love the second paragraph you'll read. Uh, I had my reporter say, well, we can do the math and tell you how many teachers that is. It comes to 58. And that brings it into perspective. That's the kind of journalism I like to do to bring it home. I think that's something else that Eric was saying too. If you can bring it home to people, like what is $2.6 million? million? Not much in a $1.8 billion budget school district, seventh largest in the U.S. So, you know, that's a, that's a ho-hum to public officials and the bureaucrats, and maybe it becomes ho-hum to us. You know, the famous saying, you know, assume we're talking about real money, it could be a million, a billion. Um, but if you could put it in the perspective of, really, 58 teachers you could have you paid for, and we're not laid off. So, yeah, I, I, don't, uh, I, I don't buy into this whole concept of, you know, if you don't have money, no, you're, I, I can tell you, whatever the percentage of that in my house, that food doesn't get wasted. It just doesn't. It's different when it's your money. We did a story also about travel. Um, and there wasn't, uh, here was the abuse we found at the, at the school system level. They weren't going to exotic places, they were going to conferences. But what they were doing is they were buying their plane ticket the day before the conference. Conferences that they knew about, you know, in, education conferences. If you're, if you're in a profession that's had conferences, you know they're playing a year in advance, six months in advance. I guarantee you, if you're going on a family vacation, you don't buy a ticket the day before. Trust me, it's two weeks minimum, because otherwise you're paying a vastly amount of money. Um, but that's what we're doing, and so it was millions of dollars. But they didn't, because it wasn't their money, they didn't care. So um, we're going to look at some of this stuff. Let's go to the links real quick. The key to everything, and you're going to get a lot more about this um, uh, on the next session, but the key to everything is the public records request. That's, that's the cornerstone. You're going to hear a lot more about that in the next hour. Um, I think everything is a public record that government creates. Um, and in fact, most government public records laws say exactly that. Now, and then right next to it, they have a list of exceptions. It's usually about 18 miles long. Um, I'm a purist. I think if I'm paying your salary and you're creating a record on a computer that I paid for, I want to be able to see it. And I go into that. I'm not going to click on this because you're going to get more, but and a lot of these things just, just explore them when you get home. It's a, it's a letter generator that you can just plug in what you want from your local government and your federal government. It's got two categories federal records request or local state records request. And um, uh, it, it, you just plug in what you want, your name, your signature at the end, and it prints out like an attorney would. Um, and I think we need to do a lot more public records requests. I think we need to make government officials used to them. Uh, in Texas, and you can do it, in Texas we've got an activist, uh, an activist, I don't, I don't you know, what is an activist anymore? I don't know. Her name is Peyton Walcott. Now Peyton Walcott, I can't, gosh, she's that, that weird look where I can't tell if she's 60 or 104. I can't quite tell. I do know she's not changed her hairstyle since 1962. It's this beehive. <laughs> That's sort of striking when she comes into the room. I also can't tell whether she's 5'8 or 6'4. Um, but it's, uh, she's wonderful, and you don't screw with her. She, you know, she stares you down. Here's what she did. She started out first, and here's a public records request you could make that will drive anyone here in your state nuts. Um, ask for your superintendent's just start with that. The superintendent's contract. Just ask for that. It'll have the juicy salary. They're always juicy salary. But it'll have all the perks. The phone. The car. The golden parachute. That no one really talks about. And it'll be right there. So she started um, getting those and putting them online. No commentary. Just putting them online. It drove them nuts. Uh, then she realized, well, we have to put more things online. It was her activism that today, in Texas, every school district must put online their check register. Every month, they have to put online every check they bring. And that's because of her. And you know, that's a public record, too. You know, every check written by a government entity, public record. You all may grab it. I'm going to show you some things that are that'll be easier, though. 
uh, things that you can find online and tools you want to have in your toolbox pop into a uh, Open Secrets uh, here. And thank you, lovely assistant Eric here. I appreciate it. We'll be cutting him in half later. Um, Open Secrets is, I love it. Um, you probably don't vote the guy who runs this either. It's funded by George Soros. But it is as useful as heck. And what it does, it tracks a million different things. And I encourage you to, uh, to explore it. But what we're going to look at is just click over to Politics and Elections and click down on Congress. It goes into, every, it goes into everything at the federal level, tracks money, earmarks, everything else. And just hit one of the most recent Congress. There, there it is. Uh, it gives you the, the leaders um, that are there. Let's pick, pick a leader that you like. Jim McGovern. How about this? Jim McGovern. Where is he? Which one is Jim McGovern? Oh, Jim McGovern. Uh, just pick, uh, uh, pick Pelosi. Pelosi always a crowd pleaser. And what it does, it just analyzes the money that she raises and brings in. Um, it gives you the amount raised compared to years past. You go all the way back to her career. And it gives you her every contributor. It breaks it down. It, here it just gives you the top five, but you can drill down and get more of those, uh, more of those contributors as well. Her number one, this is interesting, I didn't know this. Her number one contributor is an oil company, Occidental Petroleum. <laughs> <laughs> Would have guessed it. But that is interesting. If you're writing about Nancy Pelosi and she's bashing big oil, I that's news. And you've got the document right here you can link to. There was a question earlier about opinion. Uh, there's no, no need for any adjectives. Well, not ones you can use in private. But um, <laughs> but there really is, there it is. I mean this is this is uh, an interesting tip. Yeah, there's a question. Yeah, I use open secret. Um, but I always use it with a grain of salt because I'm never sure because of the Soros connection how accurate. The, the question is accuracy. It's trust me, dead on accurate. It's used by journalists from coast to coast. Uh, you, you got there's it's the questions have never been raised about. And by the way, uh, yeah, it'd be shut down if it were weren't accurate because it's their numbers are based on FEC numbers and it, you it, yeah it's um, well, yeah and you can't go directly to the Federal Election Commission if you want. Uh, but I, I use it all the time, and I, I, I don't lose a wink of sleep. But I, I understand the concern. The concern was, you know, source money, you know, is there big squirrely things going on? No, and I'll bet when I talk to a group of uh, left-leaning activists, they, you know, and if Coke funds various things, they're suspicious about that, and I, you know, I have to talk to them. You're being a lot more calm about it than they are, actually. So, I'm sorry, I just won't Does this go down to, like, local selectmen or aldermen, or is it only you know, uh, if you stick around the next hour, he is going to get into it. This site does not, but there is a way to get at it. It's a great question because I'm a huge, uh, the reason I love looking and focusing at local officials, uh, the, the question was, you know, how, how does this drill down to your local level? This does not, you're going to find a way in the next hour to do that. And, and by the way, I, I think you ought not waste your time passion. Nancy Pelosi, I know, or, or Jim, um, or the Speaker of the House, because I happen to think there's a lot of people doing that already. Um, where I think help is needed is the sewer commission, it's the city councils, it's the county level. Um, just because that's where I think corruption starts, the school board. You know, you don't become Speaker of the House and, and wake up and go, huh, today's the day I'm going to be corrupt in the earmarks and send money back home. It, it, it begins in sewer. That's where they begin you know, and go up there. Yeah, I got you exactly right. Stop yeah. Uh, do you find open secrets? How do you find open secrets different from the FEC? Uh, there, uh, the question is, uh, looking at FEC and open secrets, open secrets a lot more analysis. Like they'll t they'll they'll forward you without me throwing the FEC stuff into an Excel spreadsheet. You know, it gives me a breakdown of every um, you know of of. Everything that you can want. Plus, it has a lot more information. Like it's got, it tracks lobbyists, tracks your marks, tracks. It makes it tracks five hundred and C fours and things like that. You know, so there's a ton of information. I'm only giving you a small sliver, but uh, it really packages a lot of stuff. And they'll bring, they'll they'll point out trends uh, as well. So I, I I just find it useful, and it's it's a little quicker than the NBC stuff, even if you're just looking at campaign finance. So if you're writing about a person in Congress, 
I just do a quick check here and see if anything jumps out at you. You know, where are they getting their money? And um, you know, like the Pelosi thing just jumped out at us. I, I would, I, I bet you would have all lost bets when I, if I would have asked you who is her number one contributor this year. You know, I, I, I would have lost money. I wouldn't have guessed Will. Yeah. Yes, sir. Um, regarding open secrets, one of the things that we learned uh, in the past hour was uh, placement on search engines. By using the link to open secrets, aren't you putting them higher up the Soros administration, higher up in the search engines? Wouldn't you be better using that for personal research in linking to the FEC or the sort of original source document? I don't know. I'll let you wait into it. I, I, I think this is such a credible resource that this is something you want to steer attention to regardless of who funded it. Now, if it's one of Soros's other projects, the Center for American Progress, Think Progress, don't link to them because that's spouting off an editorial point of view. This is just a good open government website. And, and a lot of people donate to this too, but it's, it's just not, it's not political or if, it's, if it is, it's so subtle. Uh, and by the way, I would not guess that most people know that the Soros is a background. There's one more here that I do want to There's a question on. Yeah. I just wanted to make a comment. There's a girl coming who got elected onto the school committee. 400 iPhones just got approved Thursday night for people in Worcester. I, I would love. I, I would love that. What I would. What I would do. I would immediately. I would write a public reference request asking for that budget break. You know, what would the cost? They're of, saying it's only fifty-six dollars a year for each iPhone. Well, we'll see. And by the way, what we call in journalism business a tickler file. Uh, is that we remember to do another request a year from today, so you can, a year from today, see if that promise matched up. Uh, we did that in Texas, where uh, during the legislative session, there was just a huge, um, uh, uh, you know, it was, boy, the sky's falling, you know. Budgets cut, granny will be on the street, you know, babies tossed from the cliffs. Uh, and we went back to see actually what were the effects, and far smaller than the what you hear just every year before the legislature. So well, keep, keep that in mind. What happened here? Because they needed more money, they got sure, more but, money in Worcester, and then she found nine hundred thousand dollars a superintendent Thursday. Was it in the couch? Oh. Where was it? Like, uh, the seats of the car. I find some some money there on the car. So anyway, do do the records request for that because because the iPhones. Trust me, that that goes. That, that, that people love when you personalize, when you get that, get that back. Trent, on, on the topic of government phones, can you tell that story quickly about that council meeting? Oh, I love this. One of my favorite stories, I, I think it was Washington State, um, or Michigan, Michigan. I, I forget. I have to look this up. There was a guy on city council, and if you've been to a city council meeting, and then you have, you have your, you raise your hands, there's a, a place in most of the council meetings where you can get out and give your year or two cents, you know, whether it's three minutes or however long they give you. And uh, so people, it was a very controversial issue. People were walking up and giving their set. And one person in the crowd on this issue, whatever the issue was, the controversial issue, noticed a councilman over the corner, not paying attention, but he was on his doctor. Just, you know, typing away the entire time. At the end of the meeting, he wrote out a public records request saying, I want every message sent from that BlackBerry. Emails are public record. If they're done on a government-owned, taxpayer-funded. All of these iPads. Yeah, you're going to love it. <laughs> I love it. Emails are tons of fun. So, uh, <laughs> so what, what he ended up, uh, what we fed him and they delivered, what happened was, there's a pickup. Um, not only was he flirting with his girlfriend. Yeah. He, he wasn't married. That was his, um, you know. But here's what, here's what killed him. He was making fun of the speakers. And that's the killer. You know. So, um, you know, maybe he's a charming guy. He's the photo of his girlfriend. I forgave that. But, you know, you're making fun of the speakers and stuff. Yes, sir. How far do you go with, I mean, I, I would be willing to go to the limit, but how far do you go with pushing them to give you these records? Because I've already requested records from Mickey Tompkins. You're going to hear all about this. Sorry? Congress is a death Oh, yeah, Congress. Oh, Congress is. Oh, if you're the Congress, you're not going to get any. Sorry, I was a little. Uh, Congress has exempted themselves from every law that they make you follow. Yeah. They are exempted from OSHA, for example, which I find funny. Uh, or uh, overtime. Like, they can run their staff. EEOC. Crazy. Oh, yeah. Um, 
So anyway, but yeah, it's common, now there are ways to get around that, but that's why I want my phone numbers up there. There are ways, backdoor ways to get information. I'll give you an example. We did a, uh, we did a story at Texas Watchdog about all the uh, congressmen who opposed the stimulus. And we helped the Center for Public Integrity get, get letters that Congress wrote to different organizations and different federal agencies asking for stimulus. And we matched the people that were publicly opposing the stimulus. And then we found a letter saying, hey, can you bring some of that in my district? So it's horrible. See, this is, this is again what we did for I, I hate everyone in power. I, I, don't, I really do. I, I, don't trust, I don't trust the soul. Uh, you know. I always, I, I, I tell you, I, uh, when, I, when it comes to vote, I always vote for the poor socialists to give, make them feel better. You know, whatever the, 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 the nutty green party guy is. You know, keep the guy, you know. So the guy's completely depressed after election. Like, you know. Anyway, that's uh, open secrets. It's a lot of fun. Let's skip political party time. We have time to go back. And will you keep track of time? So I sure. Yeah, I, I appreciate that. Um, here's the other thing that I encourage you to look at because this is something that used to happen in newspapers all the time. People used to build careers off of looking at parts. I I remember being at the Denver Post ten years ago, and when an audit would come out, boy, we'd all be there. Um, because audits are big news, and most state auditors, the staffs, take their jobs really seriously. Um, and most, uh, most federal auditors take their jobs very seriously. The offices of the Inspector General take it very seriously. Um, and uh, they really are, you know, Congress says money should be spent a certain way, or your state says money should be spent a, spent a certain way. They uh, really do track that stuff. And let's take a look at HUD uh, audits, if you can. Uh, this stuff is checked every day. Uh, HUD audits, uh, you track them by state. They don't come out every day. Sometimes there will be three in a week, and sometimes there will be four or five months um, before one. That's why I, I, I put this on my file to check once. Go ahead and click audits up there. And then scroll down to audit reports here, and then hit the external audit reports here on this. Uh, external right here? External, yeah, there you go. And then it gives you audit reports by state, and that's for fun, probably ought to hit Massachusetts. And there it is, the last one came out in March. And it looks like, as I'm reading this, and sometimes you gotta go down and read, you know, this does taste, this is why journalists don't do this anymore. They don't have time to read, you know, and really get to the bottom of it. Uh, but I read it, and it says that, um, between July 2010 and September 2011, $7.8 million in housing assistance wasn't properly supported. Would like to know, I, I, that excites me. Uh, it failed to uh, conduct proper rate reasonableness to ensure that people ought to be getting this money. Uh, they did not follow procurement practices and procedures. Um, they did not perform cost estimates before selecting bids. Again, if it were there, if it were your money, if you're going to redo your fortune, I imagine you'd get a couple of bids rather than, eh, you know, that's my brother-in-law. Come on over and give you a sweet contract. Yes? My big issue is HUD. I have right here, HUD, seven, they've just got $70 million a year to teach grant recipients how to spend the $60 billion. The HUD budget is $60 billion a year, and they just got $70 million so that they'll be able to spend it better because they don't know how to spend this. And set-asides, they push people, the banks, to give mortgages. We've already been through this with the mortgages. We're, we're in the wrong business, this. clearly. Uh, oh, yeah. Sad. You're, you're, that is my thing. i got to get out of this and get into it. Oh. You're making money work for HUD. Oh. Sounds like Pretty sweet deal. Uh, so anyway, no one looks at these audits. That's great. It reminds me of the story we did on stimulus. One of the reasons I love the stimulus. My, one of my favorite stimulus stories that we found out of Texas uh, were studies that were done. Uh, and one was to uh, predict, uh, to do a better job of predicting the weather. Which makes sense if it were, you know, Texas and the Gulf Coast and hurricanes. This was predicting the weather on Venus. <laughs> Since we the planet, yeah. Since we we gutted NASA, we're not going there anytime soon. I would have put that one off. The other one um, was the stimulus funding that paid for, and again, this is all public records. This is stuff you can get your hands on. 
was the stimulus funding that paid for the study to find out how people felt about the stimulus. <laughs> couldn't, couldn't, couldn't be. So. I didn't ask um, no, I, I, no, I, some of them study this for people in this room, I guess. Yeah. I'm, not, I'm not sure. Do you want a recovery.gov? Yeah, it's got a recovery.gov as well. Um, and this is a, since we're talking about stimulus, um, and this is the government's website. Again, when you talk about open, uh, when you talk about linking to things, this is Solidus Sears, right? It's the government. Um, or at least it's Solidus Sears as far as people being able not to disagree with you. I mean, this is, this is the government's own own information. Sorry, sorry, we're going slow. Please loading. Source material. Yes, absolutely. And again, you know, I want to do get back to sort of there was the question about opinion, and I made fun of not using adjectives, but you know, sometimes the facts are just so strong in and of themselves. Two of the most powerful things I've ever read didn't have one adjective in them, and the one was the Star Report. The other was the 9/11 report from the 9/11 Commission. If you read them, I mean, read them or not, you're like, wow, this is. Stunning. But if you go back and take a look, not one adjective. You know, it's just the facts, man. And it was, it's powerful. And I think facts can be powerful. Um, again, there's a lot here, a lot of information here. Uh, it tracks where um, uh, stimulus spending is going on in your community. But let's just look at, uh, go to accountability up there uh, in the top. Uh, yeah, there you go. You got it. Uh, it should. Give you a little pull down there. Oh, it's still loading. So, yeah. Um, <laughs> now this is actually a pretty good. It, it's a pretty good tool. Um, are we uh, still? We're we still on. Let me see if I can. Oh, here we go. Okay. Accountability. No, it isn't just a blind page. Although you may think that. <laughs> Trust me. It, it does come up with with stuff. Uh, again, questions about floating, absolutely, yeah. We used to be afraid of the word auditor. Yeah. The auditor's kind of bullshit. But uh, it doesn't seem like we're afraid of it now because the results seem to be covert. Um, uh, the question is, the auditor. Are we, so are we we're job, afraid of the auditor or are we not afraid of the our auditor? Our job now is to make if sure you're being you audited, know. Yeah, if you're being audited, be afraid of that auditor. Or be the auditor. Uh, or you can be the auditor, but, but this is auditor, and, and we're going through the auditor, the office of the inspector general, this is auditors of tax money, of tax money being spent, out of your money. That other auditor, if the IRS comes, you know, hello, uh, can we see your receipts? You know, that's, go under the bed. Um, there we go, great. And I go down to offices of the inspector general, and click on that. Into the, uh, oh, here, do you know that here's the, uh, do you have the password? Here's the, uh, here. okay, great. Oh. Caps. Caps. Now, and again, all these links and more are on this site um, that we're going to send to you, and if you've written it down, it's uh, it's just on the text. I made a page for you guys, it's a swatch log where it's got all these links, and just encourage you to, uh, to explore. Oh, I think that would be better. Great. Thank you, Eric. I really appreciate it. Yeah, just click on Office of the Inspector General there, because this is all on the site. And I don't know, just go down to All Inspector. Now I know I'm going to take the survey. Maybe you do. And this just gives you um, every Inspector General report that comes out. You can see uh, there are four or five a month that come out. Not every one of these is going to deal with uh, Massachusetts, um, Department of the Interior, there's, there's a HUD. Um, since you're a big fan of HUD, why don't we click on that one? Um, the, the second one came out June 5th. Um, and it gives you, you click down, it gives you the, uh, the whole audit, click on that. Where's the whole? Oh, yeah, no, right, this is a PDF right here. And then it gives you all the HUD audits, right, right here above the Office of the Inspector General. Um, and there is highlights. Uh, stop there. So, and this, this becomes, this, this is great. Uh, we, we, uh, we perform the audit because of the stimulus money uh, review. Uh, uh, they got $60 million for this particular program. And, oh, they didn't implement any external controls to 
monitor the people they gave this money to. <laughs> I trust them. Scroll down. Scroll does. Uh, huh. No reconciliation of drawdowns to his expenditures, instances of improper payments to vendors, ineffective internal audit function. <laughs> Just another day, it's not that it sounds like. Um, but I guess my point is, keep an eye out for this at your community. And so two things, one, write about it. Uh, and two, because this is news, and by the way, easy news, I mean, this isn't tough to do, alert your newspaper. I mean, write about this on your blog, or tweet this out, or, or whatever, however you want to push this out. But also pick up, you know, this is, this is news, and it becomes easy for a reporter to do. Um, you know, it's like, wow, here's the audit. Well, it's all right there. And in fact, here's, here's why audits are, for, are actually a lot of fun. Um, not only do you have the auditor and what the auditor found, or the office and the inspector general found, uh, in the audit, when you read it, there's a response from the agency. They respond. And they say one of two things. They either say, we disagree with you, or they say, okay, you're right, and we'll fix it. Um, let's go to your state auditor, too. And while you're doing that, it's when I look in Tennessee, Okay, great. Oh, that's good. No. Um, are you getting into that? The State Inspector General? We, I have found our Inspector Generals in Texas to be woefully ineffective for some reason. Federals are just here. We, we, we don't have one right now. Like, that is, it's yeah. open. The office is not filled. The, the office is not filled. I, I suggest it's the government may ask for suggestions. Mike go that in class 25, but. Um, <laughs> yeah. and, and, and anyway, well, uh, the. Um, in Tennessee, the state auditors, now the auditor is a political position, but I'm telling you, people in the, who actually do the work are, they're, they're solid as serious gang. They really are in most states that I've worked. And um, the, uh, and in Tennessee, in fact, they're, but they can't, they can't be political. The auditors have said, like the, uh, the, you know, the guy that's actually doing the audits. Uh, but in Tennessee, uh, they were so frustrated by the lack of, re here's what happened, they'd go to a town or city or an agency, find something wrong, missing money, problems with how the money was spent, and the agency would say, oh yeah, we'll, we'll fix that. And they never did. Uh, there's no follow-up. So the auditors did a bit of a revolt. And but they couldn't go out and protest. You know, they uh, so needed to be right down the middle. Um, here's what they did. In the next audit, they would list the problem, just like they did here, and they added a sentence. No adjective, just the facts. This is the fourth time we have found this problem. This is the seventh time we have found this problem. And it was a signal to reporters, because suddenly if there's a problem, and then there's a response from the agency, yeah, okay, you know, maybe that's page B2. If this has happened seven times in a row, suddenly it's page A1. And uh, so I, I would look, again, I don't know how to do it here, but I would look um, for those uh, tickler files, look at those audits throughout the ages to see if those problems actually get fixed. Because then that becomes even, you, you've taken it to one level of news to sort of an outrage factor um, that's up here. I actually like your auditing website, believe it or not. Um, this was the funnest thing that I liked was um, uh, recent news that comes out, but go to reports uh, down here, uh, Eric. And go to, uh, go to Bureau Special. Investigations. That, that, yeah, just click on that. And just click on the third quarter. And it gives you a report of fraud that they found in various agencies. No. Oh. And I love this thing, actually. Um, and I, again, I don't know if you've read it. I, 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 I just was playing last night with this. And, um, total fraud identified just by the state in fiscal year. Well, but it goes down, you know, what? Keep going down to the mass health fraud, they go to specifics, um, the number of investigations that they have going on, how many came from the hotline. And stop right here, identified fraud by program type. In just the third quarter, and just some government workers found this, the auditors, found nearly $1.9 million in identified fraud. That's not waste, this is actual legal fraud. Um, SNAP is your number one fraudulent, uh, fraudulent folks. Uh, 
interesting. And this is just one quarter. What I would do is I would compile a year of this and, uh, you know, what is for I mean, there's a, there's a story. If I were a journalist, I'd, I'd be looking back a couple of years and really doing a nice analysis on this. Yes, sir? Yeah, it's 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 just a term, um, and, and, and it's I, I put it on my computer now and have something pop up. But what I do is uh, you can do it low tech, and, and how I used to do it when I was at say Tennessee, and I have one of those desk calendars um, that would go into next year, and I would just leaf through the calendar and make sure I put a note on the date that I wanted to remind myself of a public record. So that's what I, this is what I mean. I guess. Something that more recently did, but, but, but it'll be 
you know, no one's, I don't see anyone doing the analysis, and I haven't, it sounds like no one's heard of the, the numbers we're talking about here. In a three month period, $1.8 million in fraud. That to me is, it's a pretty good story. Um, and again, it's solid as years. It is the, the government of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts telling you that this is the number. So, I mean, no one can, I happen to, I happen to think it's probably a lot higher. I mean, this is the folks they caught. But no one can dispute if you will come out with this number. Uh, no one can say, oh, you're lying. Mm, no, I got it from, uh, I got it from um, Suzanne herself. So, um, she makes enough money to go to a nice hairstyles. It looks like that's when we got her photo. She has two primary residences. What's that? She has two primary residences. She claims primary residence to get tax breaks in two different locations. That's helpful. Yeah, nice. Helpful when it was voting, too, I think. Uh, uh, let's scroll down a little bit, see what else we got here. Uh, how much time? Uh, about 10 minutes. 10 minutes. And I want to open up for questions. Look at all this stuff. Call me. I'll happily, or someone on my team, I've got a staff of, of five people. We are digging into waste and fraud in, in Texas, both largely state and local government. But part of our mission is helping you through those roadblocks of finding out what you want to get. I love brainstorming about stories and how to get the stories. Um, so we, we sort of do just 30 seconds on each of the ones no, we get to. No, I, no, I, well, yeah, let's, let's go through it. Okay. We won't click on them. Sure, Political party first. time, it's one of my favorite sites just because it's a lot of fun. It uh, tracks um, folks running for Congress and the president. It tracks their invitations to uh, fundraisers. And it's got copies of fundraising, of fundraising like flyers that go out, that the invitations that go out, where the, um, uh, where the event is going to be, how much it costs, you know, 25 grand to, to donate for a couple of those with the savings, um, <laughs> to get in. And it's, uh, yeah, it's a, it's go, and it's actually got the invitations there as well as a quick analysis uh, of it and, and where the money's coming from, from folks in Congress um, and for the presidential, presidential races. There's just a lot there. Yes? What is that website again? It's a political party time. It's called. Just type in part of time. We'll Again, email this around to everybody after. All these links. If you if you registered online, you'll get the email. If you didn't register online, make sure we have your email address on the sign up sheet at the door. We'll email this around to everybody. And as well. you can also I, I'm going to I'm keeping it live. So it's www.texaswatchdog.org/mass m a s s slash again. So. Uh, the Department of Labor, again, a source that no one can argue. Um, the Department of Labor actually keeps all the tax forms of every labor union in the United States on their site. You can see how much the heads of the union get paid, what they spend their money on. It's, uh, it's stunning the amount of money, particularly uh, what they spend money on for politics, uh, for organizing, uh, this is actually very useful in light of the recent U.S. Supreme Court decision that knocked off, you know, if you're not, you can't force people to pay for um, political activity that they want to do, or not, you know, uh, post, force members of the organization to pay for, for uh, political uh, activities. And you can see a lot of those political activities, you can see the trips they take. There's always a good Vegas trip from the union. That's a lot of fun. Um, and I, you know what, the funniest thing too is uh, you can see what the chiefs of these unions get paid. It's six figure salaries all over. I mean, it, it's sort of, you talk about the 1%, um, I, can, I can point to some 1% folks um, that, are, that are in unions. Yes, sir. I think that's probably my question. Talk with the uh, transparency thing. What, I'm sorry? Trumpter. Trumpter. ACL. ACL, oh, I'm sorry, AC, uh, AFL, 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 CIO. Yeah, totally. Yeah. So we go to the national one. Yeah, the, the, the Washington D.C. headquarters is a lot of fun to see what they spent. Um, so and uh, government attic. Um, I like government attic. Government attic started as a site. Um, it was a guy who was against the war uh, in Iraq. Started the site. And what he did is uh, here's a little secret for you that I like to share. We talked about public records requests, and you're going to hear an earful about this in about for after I'm done. But public records requests are themselves a public record. So you can go to the mayor's office or go to the state and say, I, or the state agency, and say, I want to see every public records request filed 
to, you know, file to you in the past year. I did that for fun, just to see who's looking for one. Um, I guarantee you'll find your employers are probably doing a lot less than they ever had. It's a lot of lawyers, um, for example. Here's one I found a government addict that I had no use for, but I was fascinated with what the government tracks. Uh, the National uh, Institute of Health keeps a list of, there's a whole database of individuals on cruise ships who develop gastrointestinal problems. <laughs> I, and, who, and I, I said, who's requesting this? Lawyers. <laughs> uh, one, one, one journalist. Although it sounds like a pretty good story, and maybe not want to go on a cruise anytime soon, but um, it, uh, there's all kinds of stuff there. So anyway, they have all documents. They, what they do is they just ask for public records that everyone else is asking for, and it's, it's fascinating. There's, um, it, it's, it's not organized real well, but it might give you ideas of what to ask for. They give you ideas of what's out there. Um, it may have the documents already, because what he asked for is the public records request, and then what did you, how did you respond? So you have it all. Um, you can see all the cases closed for, um, uh, you know, we talk about fraud cases, it, a list of, of closed fraud cases for every agency. And you can take a look and then sort of request, you know, if there's something that interests you, um, you know, uh, who's embezzled, you know, it's all, it, it's everything. And hence, they're called coming out. Yes, sir. Do they charge? <coughs> excuse me. Do they charge for these? Everything things? I'm showing you free. Uh, this is this is this is free. Now you're going to hear when you submit a public records request. There's a lot of games that local governments and state governments play to try to uh, stop you from doing it. One of those is cost. I think you're going to hear about that in the next hour. There's a lot of roadblocks they try to put up, especially when. Um, He's going to get this document. How do we stop? Him? And they can't. They can't destroy that. I mean, where you see someone getting in trouble, see, paper is still sacrosanct to government as a whole. You can't destroy paper. That will. That is what will get you in trouble. You know, when you hear about the shredding. You know, what what takes down politicians? It's never the actual act. You know, it's the cover, right? And so. The cover-up comes from destroying records and these sorts of things. So they keep records. It's there. So what do they do? They try to stop you in any number of different ways, whether it's exceptions or uh, the trend now is charging. We have to charge for research because of your, your request is so deep. You've got to do a lot of research, and that's going to be 65 bucks an hour. So clearly, 118 hours. So there are ways around that, but I think you're going to hear more about that in the next hour. Last thing, we can click on this one. Um, this is fascinating, just to show you what's out there and what's public. Um, FBI files, the most secret, sort of dark files kept in the recesses of the J. Edgar Hoover building. Um, there are two ways that you can get your hands on an FBI file. One is you would ask for yours, and if you have one, they have to give it to you. The second is, as folks in Massachusetts probably know, because it's big news here, the minute someone dies and they have an FBI file, you can get it. Uh, I do this all the time for major donors in Texas. Um, if a former governor dies or a political person, I uh, the next day ask for their FBI file. You never know what you're going to find. And by the way, an FBI file isn't necessarily um, a bad thing. If you are interviewed for a uh, high government post, the FBI interviews you and you have a file. You know, you interview your neighbors and interview, you know, and all this, uh, how's Eric Telford? <laughs> it's all in there, so it's not necessarily bad. Um, uh, yeah. Uh, does your request, if I request, That's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> you would have to, I guess, request it again like a year later. <laughs> 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 and see if they would follow you around or something. I, I don't know. That's a great question. Yeah. It goes in your ticket. I mean, interesting. I, I don't know. Yes. I don't know if you were going to do the story and you got off track, but the thing about the dead people, when I was at uh, Eric's training two weeks ago, mm -hmm. the guy from Judicial Watch talked about how they had to keep going into Ted Kennedy's because it kept getting blacked out. 
And they found out that the thing they were blacking out is that Ted Kennedy hired a whole brothel full of hookers when he went to Lima, Peru. Oh, that's in not In 1960. Yeah, that's kind of, you know, I'd be surprised if he did. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he was in the 60s. He was, he was auditioning for the yeah. Secret Service. So, anyway, you're right. There's, and the lot's blacked out, don't get me wrong. Uh, but, it, but it is interesting, and you might find some interesting information. Um, one last thing, actually, and uh, what they've done before you get off this. There's a form to fill out that you send in, by the way. Here's the thing. Again, it's, it's very cheap. This is the one thing that costs money. It used to be an FBI file, say, a thousand pages. Um, would, uh, you know, it's, it's 10 cents, you know, 50 cents a page for the first 50 pages, and then 10 cents a page after that. Please come to the Jager Hoover building and pick it up. Um, what, they, what they're doing now is putting everything on disk, and it costs 15 bucks. So it's, it's, the price is absolutely reasonable. It's the only thing I've talked about today that costs a dime, that costs anything. Um, here's, here's a lot of fun. Well, a lot of fun if you're me at night. This is what I do. So you're probably, you're probably actually have, you're at a cocktail party or something. I'm, I'm sitting at home uh, looking at FBI records. There are so many, um, there, are so ma there are so many folks in, uh, in American history who have had their FBI files requested that the FBI finally gave up and said, we're putting them online. So there is a list of a hundred or more, scroll down. Um, Al Capone, Albert Einstein, Abscam, uh, Dutch Schultz, Al Gore Sr. Um, in fact, you know what, I, this is, I love the government. Here's another reason I love the government. Scroll back up, please. Um, oh, they have it alphabetically. By your first name. <laughs> <laughs> Al Capone is under A. I, <laughs> Anna Nicole Smith, uh, click on any of them and just give you a flavor of what they look like. Too. Anna Nicole Smith, they wouldn't want her. And just click on part one of six, just a ton of, and this is sort of what they look like. You can see some things are redacted. Um, keep scrolling down. Um, scrolling. So yeah, just keep going. It's, it's going to be a ton of pages. I just want to give a sense of, you know, what, they, what, it, what it all looks like. Yeah, keep really scrolling down to the meat of it. Yeah, there we go. So we're saying uh, death threats. Uh, here's an email that came in to Anna Nicole Smith. Um, I have to kill you. Yeah, go back up so I can read. This is what it, now. This is a real death threat. I have to kill you, and I will. I will also kill your attorney. I watched your show. I did not send that email. I felt like it. Uh, <laughs> so anyway, you get a sense of it. So check it out for fun. So if, before requesting an FBI file, there might be one already. Online, I, uh, time wise. We'll do a, a couple of questions two and then two questions and then I, I, I want to make sure we've got time and you find it about to break at some point too. So yes, sir. Uh, I've noticed over the last year there's been a, a great proliferation of uh, government-funded ads on conservative talk radio about all sorts of stupid things such as uh, we've been a teenager. If you're a teenager and you're thinking of you know you're depressed or whatever. Call this number. Uh, there's something about how to be a good father. PSA. Tap your son yeah. on the back, you know, give him a hug. Is there My dad tapped him on the back. What a tap. Is there a way to go in and find out how much the government's spending on these? Then there is. Sort of the, uh, that's a good question. And uh, by the way, I'm frustrated as well. I There's, no, there's nothing that drove me more crazy than the click it or ticket yeah. campaign. Only because, some of the stupidest commercial ads, click it or take it, it's everywhere, click it or take it. You know, the Department of Transportation runs it, so you can go to them and find out how much you spend on click it or take it. Um, there's not a car made in America today that doesn't buzz if you don't think you're a good seatbelt. It drives me nuts. Why do you need, the commercial's already in the car, you don't need, yeah, so here's what drove me nuts. I was on the driving to the airport to come to this event, and I have the news station on in Houston, Texas, I'm driving up here. Commercial comes on, this is the kind of you're talking about, and it's how to use 911. <laughs> <laughs> and I had the same thought that you think, oh, well, how much money am I paying for this stupid ad? I don't know. I really, I hit him. I almost went off the road. Thank God I was wearing a seatbelt. <laughs> I mean, I got it. And I, I, I agree, it's a great idea. Someone ought to do that. And there is, yes, there is a way to do it. The Ad Council does a lot of these, and that might be a good place to start. But I know 
each agency has these PSAs that are, uh, there's one famous one that's been out for years on don't discriminate when you rent to people. And they had the black person call and then the Asian person call and the white guy. And they all have these horribly racist names. And, and the white guy, it was Chad Worthington. And I said, oh, I guess so hilarious. And that's the one they hired. I said, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm renting to Chad Worthington.